the criminalistic discipline covers a lot of uh, subdisciplines, from uh, drug analysis, uh, which is the field of my specialty, uh, toxicology, also um, fire debris, uh, explosive analysis, uh, also disciplines such as uh, latent print analysis, and, and some others uh, that are found under that uh, specific discipline of criminalistics. Because we are very strongly founded on the discipline of chemistry, uh, we use all those techniques that you could in fact use in any chemistry laboratory. Uh, instead of using those techniques or those instruments uh, for analysis of uh, environmental samples, for example, uh, we use them for samples uh, that have forensic interest, samples uh, such as blood, alcohol, uh, and obviously controlled substances, uh, um, that, uh, uh, which are the ones that I specialized on. So. But in general, chemical techniques, uh, techniques like uh, gas chromatography, uh, mass spectrometry, infrared spectroscopy, that a lot of analysts, chemists in general will know, we apply those for the use of uh, for the study of controlled substances or any other materials of forensic interest. Right now, one of the main challenges that we have uh, is the increase on uh, um, new controlled substances or new analogs of controlled substances. Um, materials that m many times we, we haven't encountered before uh, for which we need to um, use our creativity to uh, develop and validate new methods uh, so that we can uh, positively identify uh, those new substances and uh, through that way work in collaboration with law enforcement as well as the medical professionals uh, to counteract uh, some of those uh, uh, actions that are affecting society. So the role that we play is a role that it's necessary for us to identify those compounds so that law enforcement uh, can go after them and uh, so medical professionals can help uh, treat them uh, as for those uh, individuals that have suffered uh, either overdose um, or any other type of uh, elements as a consequence. We do different types of uh, testing, and this is very common for many of the forensic disciplines, not only for drug analysis, but we do have the capabilities of uh, assessing uh, whatever powder or substance may come into the laboratory. And, and right away, we can obtain a pretty good idea if it's something that we have encountered uh, previously or not uh, because of the high quality of the tools uh, that we utilize. Uh, and once a new substance is encountered, uh, usually it involves a little bit more work, a little bit more investigation. Um, and that's when it becomes also essential to collaborate uh, with other disciplines because maybe another discipline uh, has already seen it. Uh, maybe a toxicologist has already seen the substance. Sometimes we see it before them, sometimes they see it before us. Uh, and that's where collaboration becomes really important, as well as keeping uh, up with the field in the scientific literature. Uh, a lot of the times the materials have already been seen uh, in research laboratories, not necessarily forensic laboratories. So that's uh, definitely when collaboration becomes important in communication with the rest of the world. And that's where uh, the general knowledge of chemistry becomes very important and uh, your familiarity with and expertise with the discipline because a lot of the times the material may look like something you've seen before but then there's something that's off and that's where your intuition as a scientist comes in. When you investigate this looks like this other types of compound but there's something different about it. And, and that's when you get together with colleagues and uh, maybe other analysts that have a different specialty than yours. Maybe you're an analytical chemist, but maybe you have a colleague that may be an organic chemist that is more familiar with how these substances are 
synthesize and put together. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's where those collaborations become important. And at the end of the day, that's how we get to discovering when new compounds are out on the streets or coming into the laboratories. We are usually uh, in the routine of analyzing compounds that have been encountered by law enforcement that get submitted to the laboratories. Uh, and a lot of the times, uh, we have specific standard operating procedures that we use in the laboratory. And once in a while, we, we do need to uh, change or modify those procedures because of recent uh, changes uh, to the law. Uh, and there was one particular change that happened at the end of 2018 that a lot of laboratories are encountering right now. And it's related to the analysis and distinction between uh, different types of cannabis samples. Those samples that uh, are the drug type cannabis, uh, uh, in other words, marijuana, that is controlled under federal law, uh, and other types of cannabis, uh, also known as industrial cannabis or hemp. Uh, and that was a very recent change in the law um, where uh, the law changed and then the laboratories were not equipped to answer the question that now it's being asked by the law. Uh, and we have had a, a very busy year. Uh, not only those of us at the Drug Enforcement Administration that we had to respond uh, right away to the change in federal law, but also collaborating with a lot of uh, other jurisdictions, either at the state or at the uh, county level or uh, international level, um, where we have uh, collaborated and uh, help each other on actually try to come up with procedures that we can all uh, validate and implement in laboratories in order to respond to uh, this very recent change. Uh, so that the laboratory analysis part doesn't become a, a hurdle on in the process of uh, uh, either prosecuting those that do have the controlled substance in, in possession and are doing it legally, but also protecting those that uh, are actually legitimate uh, are growers of cannabis and hemp for commercial purposes uh, and not for legitimate purposes. Um, it has, it has become a very, very recent challenge that had require, has required a lot of collaboration and effort from uh, all jurisdictions, from the federal to the state level to the local and county jurisdictions.